take a mental snapshot of this. this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you why this inverted hammer is very, very important for tomorrow's session, right? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of uh nightly wrap-up show. Crazy market, hope everybody's doing well. Um, the key last week, and we started talking about the disconnect between uh, all the indexes and the leaders. You guys remember uh, Tesla, Nvidia, Apple, uh, Amazon, right? RBLX, uh, Lucid, uh, TTD, they were going higher. And, they, and again, like I said, usually when you have only a handful of names taking you higher, it's kind of reviewed from last week, um, there's usually a big, big problem. Uh, but not in those cases, not in those cases. Again, again, we started talking about how hedge funds wanted to kind of hedge fund and mutual funds and pension funds had to really try to mark up their quarter towards the end of the year and they were propping these stocks up and they had really, really big runs. Now the question was, well, what happens when these stocks uh, get tired, right? What happens when these stocks get sold? And that's the part what we have to always be on, uh, prepare for, okay? We always have to play devil's advocate because the one thing that I've learned uh, years ago, okay? Years and years and years ago that if you're not prepared and you and you don't know both sides of the equation, you don't know your worst case scenario, you're probably going to live it over and over again. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened to a lot of traders that were chasing stocks into disadvantageous levels. That's the best way I've said it. Again, remember, a stock only breaks out once. There's only one range, there's only one macro channel. Uh, when a stock is 20, 30, 40% to 20, 30, 40 points away from its breakout level, what does that happen, right? You start falling off from the 10th floor, from the 12th floor, from the 15th floor versus the first floor uh, where you could get maybe some bumps and bruises, maybe a broken foot, but the point is you'll survive. And that's exactly what happened to the market today. Um, you know, we were talking about, if you go back to the weekend video uh, from yesterday, we were talking about continued strength in names. Uh, obviously, uh, my favorite and, and what a, I mean, to talk about this stock as a rock star is, is an understatement. Um, you know, my favorite was Tesla. I, I thought we could get to that um, 1180s level and we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Uh, NVIDIA had this really good, strong day two run today at one point. Uh, you know, at one point today, it was up, you know, pretty huge in, into the 40s. But the most important part is, you know, the breakouts weren't today, right? The breakouts were over channels, either the earnings highs or in Tesla's case, uh, a range high. And the most important part is you sell into gaps. You don't buy them. And I think this is where, unfortunately, a lot of new traders, because they are so, um, they're, they're, they're so wrapped around the FOMO subconsciously that they're, you know, they don't want to miss anything. You know, they don't want to be, the only person uh, in their circle who missed the trade. So they'll all chase and really get aggressive on prices that again, if you miss the individual, if you miss the individual kind of jump off zone, then you really have no, you really have no right to kind of chase prices that maybe go higher, maybe go lower. But the point is it's a 50-50 shot. Again, trading is not about 50-50. It's about uh, grabbing an edge, identifying a channel, whether that interval is a week long, two weeks long, two months long, whatever the case may be. And once it confirms that's the green light, not when it's three, four, five days later and people who bought it at the green light are selling it to you and you're sitting there and trying to figure out, uh, you know, how did you get caught? You got caught because you chased a multi-day channel instead of identifying it uh, as it was confirming initially. And that's exactly what, what exactly what happened today. And the high flyers today got absolutely destroyed. Okay, like really, really destroyed the names. Uh, that even even Friday when we talked about Amazon, you know, like to, this is one of the names I turned around. And I said, look, I, I think the stock needs a rest. Like I, I wouldn't buy this thing on strength. It needs a rest. If you go if you go to the weekend's video and it got hit. Right. I mean, anything that put in an inverted hammer. And this is kind of important, guys. Take a mental snapshot of this. this I'm going to I'm going to show you why this inverted hammer is very, very important for tomorrow's session. Right. But once you get an inverted hammer, this is the most basic uh, basic study of Japanese candlesticks. And it usually, right, there's nothing concrete or 100%, but it usually will lead 
uh, to lower prices. And not only did we see that on Friday on Amazon, well, we saw that today, right? We saw that today on the queues as well. So if you look at today's action, uh, you will see a tremendous amount of value tomorrow to the downside. Absolutely tremendous. Um, anything that had a big, big run that is stopping on the five or 10 day moving average. And you can see here how the queues stopped at the five day. You guys remember the last time the queues lost the five day moving average, right? You know, the last time they lost the five day moving average went down 10 points in the next two days. Here we are on the five day moving average. So if the bulls want to kind of maintain this, you know, pretty aggressive uh, action, they have to hold today's low. If today's low confirms, and again, for all you guys who are joining us for the first time, the five day moving average for me is the shortest term sentiment. The 10 day moving average for me is the birth of the trade. So if anything confirms the five and especially the 10, there's a high probability that the price action will continue the next day uh, in that area. So when you're doing your chart work tonight, you're gonna see a ton, okay? An absolute ton of opportunities of stocks that closed. Uh, they're mirroring the NASDAQ 100 either on the five or in the 10 day moving average. So again, I'll give you a perfect example or an inverted hammer, right? You guys remember inverted hammer, right? Inverted hammer, right? Amazon, I'm gonna show you, right? Amazon, inverted hammer. Again, this is a sell signal. So look at names like MU for tomorrow, right? MU had this phenomenal run. When was the last time you saw Micron go from 70, you know, 70 to almost 90 in a course of two weeks, right? Didn't happen, never happened, right? Look at this inverted hammer. That's a sell signal, that's not a buy signal. It doesn't mean the stock is gonna go to all time lows. It just means for tomorrow's action, your focal point should be today's range. If it starts losing today's range, well, the damn thing could get hit, right? Get hit very, very aggressively. You know, look at names like Amen. We always talk about stocks that are taking out earnings lows. And again, we'll get to Beyond and all the other pivots in a second. But look at AMAT. AMAT today lost, right? Exactly what we talked about. Lost yes on uh, Friday, the 10-day moving average. Now it's sitting on its 20. If it loses the 20-day moving average, it has a lot of room down as well. Look at a name like Google, right? These were all big, big movers. Look what Google did today. Google lost the five, Google lost the 10, sitting on the 20. Google confirms the 20 tomorrow. Look how much room you have to the downside. So there's a lot of value tomorrow to the downside. I would love to see the market gap up tomorrow, okay? Because if the market gets up tomorrow and all these stocks that I'm watching for tomorrow's session get stuffed into supply, they could easily go green to red, start confirming today's channels. And if you believe there's a day two theory on reversals, well, tomorrow could be the McGilla Gorilla day two potential for a lot of these high flying names. Do I, you know, do I think there's still some names you could trade to the upside? Sure, absolutely. You know, I, I still think uh, Tesla's not just gonna go down without a fight, right? Tesla had a great move today. Uh, at one point it was up, Jesus, at one point it was up 60 today, 50, 60, traded to uh, 1200 bucks today uh, into supply. So I do believe there'll be some sneaky channels uh, in a name like Tesla tomorrow, they can you know, pretty much steal some alpha on a very, very sneaky range. But ultimately, I do see, just based on charts, again, it's not it's not an opinion. I'm, I'm not a, you know, I don't care with the way the market flows. Good, bad, the indifference. But when you see screaming value on one side of the market, you have to pay close attention to it. Again, does, can the market rally tomorrow? Okay, that's fine. Again, what's the worst case? We buy stocks? Oh my God, how scary is that? But again, uh, markets go up, markets go down. Uh, when you get a market, especially this aggressive, uh, everything gets sensationalized. Everything starts expanding a lot more aggressive than normal. And the most important part is if you do your research tonight, you will be in a very, very good position to take advantage on some really good aggressive uh, day two potential shorts uh, for tomorrow. So let's talk about uh, today's action. Um, first and foremost, again, Tesla was an absolute rock star. It's been an absolute rock star. Uh, it closed above the 1120 area on Friday, put up a $20 candle into the close. Uh, this is, you know, I was up at 530 in the morning, you know, and I was like, look, you know, guys, consider taking off 70, 80%. This is a huge gap, right? You know, at one point, you know, Tesla gapped up 35 points. I go, this is a huge gap. Now it needs to build above 1173. You can see 1182, 1187. It traded just, it just a little bit less than $1,200 a share, but phenomenal move for all you guys who are still holding a 5% runner on Tesla. Hey, let it ride, right? Let it ride. You know, who knows? Maybe it comes back 
and stops you out break even. But again, at least you did your job. If, if you do your job as a trader, your runner is either gonna get stopped out break even or your runner is gonna reach measured potential. We don't know what measured potential on, on Tesla is yet because the, the story hasn't been written, but at least we know that if you keep a little piece, 5%, 3%, 8%, whatever the case may be, you did your job. Even if you get stopped out a couple of weeks from now or even tomorrow, you did your job by trying to maximize the trade on the way up for measured potential. That's the only thing you could ask uh, for traders. Uh, Rivian, right? We talked about Rivian uh, on the weekend update. Uh, for experienced traders only, 120 rising linear support. If it builds below, can get hit. Yeah, I would say Rivian got hit. Uh, Rivian uh, got hit, right? Got hit. So here's the here's the 20 we talked about on the weekend video, and the stock you know sold off you know pretty aggressively. Had a really strong rebound, uh, but stock went down for, you know about 14 points. Uh, look, look at this. I mean, this is this thing got really, really hit. I mean, look, look at this candle here. This is a $14 candle uh, straight down. Rivian got just really, really aggressively sold. Uh, Lucid, congratulations for you guys who caught the Lucid. We talked about for experienced traders this morning. Uh, watch for, an for, for a potential red to green move. Uh, second entry on red to green was phenomenal. It was up at 1.3 points. It was just, it just didn't quite make the natural pivot, but it was a beautiful move uh, into the 5740s. Just physically missed uh, the upper Bollinger Band, but uh, anyway, great move there. Uh, Akamai, I still like this thing, never got there. Beyond, you know, we made our case, right? We made the case to Beyond. Today, it finally confirmed. Not the biggest move yet, but again, it doesn't need to be the biggest move. That's the whole point. Look at Zillow, right? We've been talking about Zillow ever since the stock confirmed the earnings low. All the Zillow has done is gone $10 from the earnings low. So here is Beyond. Uh, we talked about it on the weekend video. It finally closed below the 76, uh, 75 area. Got down to like 74, 65. This is the lowest close in this whole formation. Hopefully this thing will start, you know, just moving down every day now for two, three, four, five days in a row and hopefully get down, you know, under 70. But again, this is, this is really has a lot of good potential here. Uh, BMRN 91, 80, 92 needs to build. It put in its initial move to like 92, I think 18, whatever it was, just never gave a second, never gave a second entry because the market uh, got pulled uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, OKTA, another name we talked about on the weekend video, 239, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, this thing got just destroyed, right? Just absolutely destroyed. Look at this candle here, right? So it took, it took out the 239 level and went all the way down to 226 and closed uh, on the lows. You're gonna see a lot of charts like that tonight, guys. That's what I mean by day two, potentially. Today was day two potential on LKTA, right? That was their first candle and today was day two. But there's a lot of names that have the initial candle today and we're looking for day two uh, confirmation tomorrow. Uh, so that was big. Snapchat, we talked about that as well. 50, 70, if it builds below, can flush. Here is Snapchat. Again, here's a perfect example. On Friday, it was the first close below the earnings low. And, and Snapchat went all the way down to like 47 and change. Again, this thing has more downside uh, to come, especially if they pull uh, the market. Uh, UA, I don't believe we got, never got the 238. Uh, again, here's my point also, folks. You sell into supply. You don't buy it. You sell into supply. So for all you guys who came in, 337, 340, upper Bollinger Band, make some sales. Again, the pivot was 328 earnings highs. Whoever's buying it, 340, 345, it, you're buying it in, in an extension channel the traders are selling it into because you are $12, $15 away from the pivot. Uh, Zoom, uh, wacky earnings report. Stock is kind of all over the place, but uh, this was a natural pivot here in the morning. Uh, 249, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, nice, you know, really nice move earlier. Uh, really nice move earlier in the day on, um, here's the 249 right here. It got really, really hit and then you know, went down to like 238. And then after the close, the stock went down to 234, and then it went up a little bit. Now it's down like three bucks into the close. But nice, you know, nice morning pivot on uh, Zoom. Zoom might have, uh, it might start putting in a lot of pressure on a lot of these uh, stay-at-home names. So keep an eye on that as well. Square got d demolished today at some point. Uh, Square 222, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Square, right? It took out this 222 level, went all the way down to 205. Just, just. Again, you can see how these stocks got absolutely murdered. Absolutely murdered. It was 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 an understatement uh, of the day. Anyway, take on the way down and snap. 
Uh, here is the first potential, 245, went down to 238. Take on the way down and square. Uh, square, 213, 214, next stop. And then it, not only did it, it didn't stop, right? It didn't stop at 213, 214. It just went all the way down to 205, just destroyed. Uh, TTD, if it builds below, can flush. A buyer came in for the 85 puts. Here is TTD, right? Here was TTD. Again, here's a perfect example, right? Confirmed the five-day moving average. Here's 104, right? 104 was the high, uh, was the low here. It took out 104, went all the way down to uh, 98.70s. So you can see high flyers uh, got really, really beat up today. Uh, you know, again, Rivian takes some on the way down. OKTA got smacked. TTD uh, covers some on the 10-day. Snap breaks 48. And I said, hold on to all your runners. That's the whole point in this market, guys. Hold on to runners, okay? Let the stock play out in that direction. Everything is so exaggerated, both long and the short side, that stocks are, are, are overshooting common sense and max potential. That's why you always have to hold a runner. Even if you hold one share, practice. Practice holding on to something so you can finally start trying to get the really, really bigger moves. It'll get easier in time. You'll be able to hold a bigger position in time. But the most important part is you're developing organically. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow.